Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Vita. I am a bodybuilder. I love health, fitness, wellness, nutrition. And as of four weeks ago, I am a new mommy. So we will be talking all things mommy and baby. Today on this video, we're going to talk about the baby registry, what I put on there, what I use, and what you actually need based off my experience. Every parent from what I've heard, what I've seen is different. They prefer different things depending on their lifestyle. So I'm just going to tell you what I and me and my husband prefer and um, why. So you guys can make your own decision because a lot of the stuff that they put on there, you really, really don't need. So we're going to start off with diapers. Diapers and wipes. If you want to get um, a friend a gift and you don't know what to get, you cannot go wrong with diapers and wipes. You will be using them for months and months to come and you go through them, especially in the newborn stage. I think I changed 10, 12 diapers a day, maybe more. Um, so Huggies and Pampers are our favorite. Um, there seems to be no blowouts in those. Um, they're great, they're sturdy, they just work. Um, I will say Loves do not like, Honest Brand do not like, um, what else? I think that's it. That's what the, the only four that we've tried in our experience, Huggies and Pampers, good. Wipes, um, I anyone really, I haven't found one that's not good. I don't know why you would prefer one of the, one over the other. We have several brands that we tried that we got from our baby shower. They gave us, you know, our friends and family gave us all different brands, all different types. The wipes, we don't really have a preference on those. Um, the next one would be um, a wipe warmer. We were hesitant about this one. We didn't put it on our registry and then found out that baby girl doesn't like cold wipes and I did not want to spoil her by giving her warm ones just to eventually phase out and give her cold ones later. So um, we opted not to get one and then we were blessed with a wipe warmer from a, my sister-in-law and so now it's working great. There's Ezra. <laughs> and um, we have one. It's right there. But it, it works. You pull it out. It's like a tissue box. You pull it out. Wipe. Um, it doesn't stay warm for very long once you take it out. But she seems to like it better than the cold wipe. So that was a success for us. The next thing would be butt paste and the butt spatula. The only reason that I'm bringing this up is because most... Well, yeah, all of my registry was done off Amazon. And when you get on Amazon, there's a whole checklist and they say, don't forget to add this to your registry. Don't forget to add this. And there's like so many items, so many categories. So uh, being a first time mom, I didn't know what baby was going to like. So I went through every category and added what I thought was best out of each one. And I'm coming to realize that you don't need more than half the stuff on that checklist so they did recommend butt paste and butt spatula you could really use your fingers it's your baby it doesn't matter the spatula is nice because um it's like a little plastic spatula i'll pin it but you stick it on the counter the one that i have does not stick on the countertop so it just stands up but it it doesn't it's not suctioning on the countertop but it's just like a little silicone spatula. You put a little butt paste on there and then you wipe it on the butt. If you don't want to get your fingers dirty, although you are changing a diaper, I've already been peed on, I've been pooped on. So it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to have it. The butt paste, um, I would say put it on at nighttime. I was told to put it on at night just in case baby has a poop episode at night and you don't realize and you know you wake up and it's there and it's like dried up <laughs> on the butt but it's easy when you have the butt paste on that if the baby does poop you can just wipe it off really easily so although baby is only four weeks old i don't know what comes past this time but we do do the butt paste at night um not too often but we do use it also bottles bottles you don't know what kind of bottle your baby's gonna like. There's so many different brands. Um, we have probably 15 bottles. We have Komotomo, we have Philips, we have Dr. Brown's, we have a generic brand, 
and honestly my daughter doesn't like bottles um, at all so eventually she will get used to it when I go back to work and she's gonna have to feed off of a bottle but I did find out that Bye Bye Baby has a pack of I think four and it has one of each brand bottle I would say go with that one they then you can see which bottle your baby prefers and then instead of having a hoarding of bottles in your cabinet you can just buy the one that your baby prefers boom done it's like a little trial pack um, the next thing would be a bottle warmer I would say yes because right now I'm strictly breastfeeding I did try to pump and put it in a bottle for her to take and if you put it in the fridge, it does last longer. I believe you can leave it in there for like four days. Um, but if you leave it at room temperature, you have to drink it. Baby has to drink it within two hours. So I did pump a couple times, put it in the fridge to see if my husband can feed her. Um, so you do have to warm the bottle. The bottle warmer that we got, it's very small. It fits in the cabinet. So we just put it back in the cabinet so it doesn't take up counter space and it takes about five minutes to warm the bottle and it's pretty nice it's just a touch um a little touch button thing so you can put on there if it's more than three ounces less than three ounces wow ezra went under the crib what are you doing bubba <laughs> um so i would say yes get that um i don't know how i feel about microwaving i don't even know if you can microwave i would not go that route i just got a bottle warmer bottle sterilizer we did get one we were gifted one it's super nice it's super like you know it's a two-story one so you can layer on the bottom layer on the top it fits all the the passies the bottle tops the the bottles you can put your pump pieces in there um and it dries it and sterilizes it you do have to wash it and then put it in there and it dries it and sterilizes it and it's you know it works do you have to have it I don't think so. I think if you wash it and put it in the dishwasher, the dishwasher does sterilize. So, or you could boil water. I didn't want to boil the water because that's just inconvenient to me. I'll pay for convenience. But once I found out that, you know, realized that you could just put it in the dishwasher to sterilize it, you don't need that huge bottle sterilizer. But you can get it if you want to. You don't have to have it um draft detergent we were given draft detergent for our baby shower you just want a detergent that's fragrant free you don't want anything irritating your baby but then i was thinking okay you you wash the baby's clothes in fragrant free detergent but then we wash our clothes with tide so when the baby's laid against me to breastfeed or you know that when we're cuddling her and loving on her she's still touching the non-fragrant free detergent so i was just gonna use up our tide with our for our clothes and once that's gone i'll probably just start buying fragrant free detergent anyway um so that'll go like that but you know draft detergent that's one all they have the pods that are fragrant free too i think i might end up getting that one when the draft is done but you definitely want to make sure you get fragrant free detergent the next one would be a thermometer. We did get a thermometer. Babies, when they come home, their hands and feet are not warm. My pediatrician said that it's normal. They said that you have to touch the top of their ear, and if the top of their ear is hot, then the baby's hot, and if it feels like not hot or cold, then baby's perfect. So that's a good rule of thumb. But before I knew that, I had opted for a thermometer just to check in case. Do you have to have one? No. Is it good to have one? Probably. I mean, once they get older and you're going to want to make sure they don't have a fever before you, you know, take them to the doctor or, you know, if they have anything else, it's just good to have on hand. And we don't have another, we don't have a thermometer in the house for us. We don't really, I mean, we don't use it, but I think it would be good to have one at home we just get the one that slides across the forehead uh no it doesn't even slide you just put it on the forehead and it's like a red light and it gives you the temperature on a, on the thermometer so it's like a digital so it's easy um books we're educational people we like books she has tons of books i would say if you could do books instead of cards at your baby shower that would be a cool idea 
but we do have a ton of books. We do have crinkle books. Those are good too when they're teething. Um, some of our favorites would be like Eric, Car well, my favorites, Eric Carlisle, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, or the Little Caterpillar, the Hungry Caterpillar. So we have those just, you know, for educational, you could read it to them. We read them when she was in my womb, we read them. We sit in the rocker and read them. Um, so it's just fun to have. Passy, and I'll tell you why. Or a binky, I don't know what people call it. What do you call a passy? I want to hear your comments below. Passy, I've heard a bop, a bop, a, I don't know what they called it. Passy, binky, there was another one that starts with a B. I'm not sure, but we did get a passy and passy clips. Marlon doesn't like the passy clips because it can get caught um, in the stroller and stuff, but I guess it's a good way to not have the pacifier fall out. I have them. I bought a little five pack off Amazon um, and they're like, you know, you can wash them in the washer. Um, they just clip onto the pacifier and then you clip them on baby's clothes or you can clip it somewhere to where if it falls out, you can just pick it back up. Um, the passy, I'll tell you why. There's a lot of controversy on the pacifier, but we'll get to it with this book I read that recommends passies. Oh, okay. Next on the list, diaper bag. Do you have to, do you have to have a diaper bag? You can just use a backpack. You can use a big purse. It doesn't really matter. I bought a diaper bag. It works. Um, did, I, did I have to get one? I mean, I didn't know at the time, but it really, it's just a big backpack. And honestly, I don't use my purse anymore. I just have my wallet and I throw my wallet in the diaper bag. So it's always on me. It's like my new purse. You can get a side satchel one. You can get a backpack. You can get a big tote, whichever you prefer. Some people like compartments. Some people don't like compartments. So it just depends on your preference, but it's just a big backpack. Um, next, changing pad. So we got the basic changing pad. Um, right now it has no cover because she peed on it, but I bought the covers that go on it. Um, there are some people um, that are saying not to get that one because there's other ones that you can just wipe off. Um, one, those are more pricey. Two, I think it like checks the weight or temperature of the baby. Who cares? Um, the pediatrician is going to check the weight. I didn't really care for it. Sorry, I didn't mean to be like rude. I, I'm not paying the extra money to check the weight. Um, you can check the weight on a regular scale. scale. Um, like if I'm 120 pounds and I get on with the baby and the baby's 128 pounds, she's 8 pounds. So I didn't really see the need to get that one. Um... And as a wipe off part, if you don't put a cover on it, you can wipe it off. Um, I just don't like not putting a cover because it's kind of cold. So when I lay her on there, she's very finicky and she doesn't like it. So I do use a changing pad cover. So I would recommend to get more than one of those, probably like three, maybe four. Um, burp cloths, burp cloths. We got these, these are amazing. I know Target has some cloud nine good ones too. These are the muslin ones from Amazon. They come in like a pack of five or something. They're super soft. And as you can see, like you can fold it and stick it in your diaper bag and it doesn't really take up that much space because it's so like thin, but soft and fluffy. And I have these all over the house. So I have one in here, one or two in the bedroom. And then we have a couple in the living room because I'm out there nursing sometimes and watching TV. So these are just good to have. Um, the next thing you need is swaddle blanket. Okay, so swaddle blankets, you're gonna want a big one. So like 44 by 44. There are ones that are smaller and they work when they're younger, um, but I found the best way to swaddle because I read this book, which we will get to, but you are gonna need a swaddle. And there are swaddles like the Ollie that are Velcro. Those are nice if you don't know how to swaddle. I didn't know how to swaddle, but I YouTubed and I figured it out. It's really not that hard. Um, <laughs> she's starting to wake up again um so the ollie one it's more pricey but i really bought it for my husband because i didn't know he was gonna know how to swaddle and it's velcro so you literally just velcro the baby in one side and then on this side and then you like there's a loop and you tie it on the end and that's it but last night he was trying to use the Velcro and it like Velcroed on something else and he got frustrated and like threw it. So he likes the traditional thin, stretchy, big swaddle. 
it's really not that hard once you do it a couple times it helps if it's thin and it helps if it's stretchy the one at the hospital they give you for that blanket that hasn't changed in 30 40 years the white one with the blue and red stripe that is not stretchy the hospital nurses use that and they swaddle just the same um, but I personally prefer the thin stretchy one because you can get them in real good and it prevents them from like moving their hands out so um, that's what I would recommend I would get put three or four of them on there there is one brand called itsy ritzy I don't no okay so it's like a swaddle blanket and it has a loop so it's like a bigger than this okay and you can swaddle because it's like a big square you can swaddle or you can use it as a nursing cover so what you do is you put the loop through one of the corners and your head goes through here if you can imagine your head goes through here and it covers you while you're nursing but also it's a swaddle blanket that was really creative or you can just sew on a loop on any of your swaddle blankets and you can call it a nursing cover because it works. And it's pretty smart actually, whoever came up with that. Um, so you can do it that way. Uh, okay, you don't need this until they get older, but we did a lot of research on this. A bumbo and an upseat. It's for when they're older, for them to sit um, instead of a high chair, they can sit in a seat and it has little buckles that go around the chair if you want to prop them up on a chair and buckle them in around the chair the up seat we did get but specifically because the hip placement in the chair so the bumbo the legs when you put the baby in they're kind of like straight but the up seat it's more pricey but i think worth it because the legs um go out wider and so it's better for their hips, especially when they're that young. So that's the only reason why we got that one over the Bumbo. The Bumbo, um, it's more silicone and I believe you can put a tray on it just like the up seat. But I didn't like the hip thing. I did like that the hip placement was better on the up seat. So it is significantly more expensive. I think it's Bumbo's like a third or maybe half the price of an up seat. But it's a good investment, I think. She hasn't used it yet, but just the idea of it, um, I will let you guys know in another video. So, newborn toys. So, newborns, we got her this. It's like a um, tummy time. So, they can do tummy time. If I can make it work. And you lay this, they can look at themselves. And it has the black and white because newborns only see black, white, and red, I think. Um, this I tied on because it's like crinkle, crinkle, but it also has the black and white. And then whenever they're able to see color, you can flip it and there's color. So you can lay them on tummy time and they can look at all these things. So it's pretty cool. And then it has these teethers. These were on Amazon. I'll link it below, but it seems pretty cool. We use this sometimes and um when she does tummy time even though she is so small and new and fresh out the womb we still use this um as i said we're big on education so we wanted to get her started on that and she is kind of lifting her head a little so that's cool um tummy time mat do you have to have one no not really it's kind of cool to have one especially if it has like things around it um that the baby can play with like a mobile or I don't know we got one but we also got one of those um, mats that you can take pictures and it says one month two month three month you can use that as a mat for tummy time tummy time you just have to be on the floor and you know practice to raise their heads um, so you could really use anything you can use a blanket do you have to have one no not really you don't have to you can do something without um, Oh, back to the bottle stuff. Make sure you guys get a bottle brush. I don't want to use the sponge that we use for dishes on the baby. I don't know. I'm weird like that. So bottle brush. And some of them come with like the little silicone sticky that you put um, on the counter that does stick. So we have that and it just lay it by the sink and that's it. Um, the drying rack for bottles do you need it no like i said i use a dishwasher if you want to get one you can it just takes up space and i don't like extra clutter on the counters 
Next is a boppy. The boppy, I do like. Okay, boppy. We have three of these. Do we need three? No, but I am using all three and I'll tell you why. This isn't, this is not the, well, yeah, it's shaped like this, but the other ones are smaller. Um, so the idea is, I know that some moms like the breast friend pillow, but it's really big and bulky. And I just, like I said, I don't like clutter and extra, but I found that the people were complaining about the boppy because when you put it on and you lay the baby to breastfeed, it like, there's like a dip right here. It, there's a hole and they're like, oh, the baby falls in the hole. Well, if you take it and you put it more further back and you kind of like flip these up, the baby doesn't move. So that's what I've been doing. Or I will flip it backwards and I'll put the baby, I'll put the baby right here. And so it doesn't move. So I have one in the bedroom and I have one in the living room for when I breastfeed and it's a lifesaver because baby is getting kind of heavy. She was born at six pounds, she's now eight, but it's kind of heavy to hold for 15, 20 minutes. So I just, I like the boppy. I don't know, I've never had the breast friend pillow, but the boppy works just fine. Also, next one is a lounger. The lounger I do like. We have a huge ottoman and we lay the baby there whenever we put her to sleep and we're watching TV. They like noise, they like the white noise, they like the background noise, I don't know, if she's sound asleep. So the lounger I did get, the one that I got was off Amazon. Everything that I got was pretty much off Amazon or gifted to me from somewhere, but the lounger is from Amazon and you can pull it and make it so like the outside walls are taller so baby like won't roll out um, if she's strong like that humidifier is a must um, for the room it's just a good thing to have you want to put that on there teething toys and crinkle books is she going to use them i don't know i guess i'll let you guys know but she did get a lot of teething toys um educational toys crinkle books just because they're educational and they're for you know for her to chew on or whatever newborn medication so i did um get the little remedies um it's like a a little travel pack and it has um, Tylenol, gas relief, gripe water, a bulb for the nose and a syringe. And I think that's it. I think I got two of those and we put them in two diaper bags because my husband wanted one. Um, but have I used them? No, she's too young. Will I use them? Yeah, probably eventually, but they're like little bottles and you can put them in your diaper bag and take oh it had a butt paste too a little travel butt paste and so you could take that with you in your diaper bag just good to have and oh something nobody really talks about i had one person mention this on a youtube video and it's called a wet dry bag so it's like a little zipper bag with a little loop I will put it over here, but it came in handy because we put that in the diaper bag and we had to change our diaper somewhere that wasn't home. We had to change it somewhere else. And I didn't want to put the diaper in our friend's trash can. So I put it in the, um, the wet diaper bag, put it back in the diaper bag and then came home and put it in the trash. So it's just a little bag to keep it away from all the other stuff in there. So like I had new clothes in there, like just in case she had a blowout or like the diapers and the wipes I had in there, but the diaper wet dry bag is a way to keep it away, like your soiled stuff away from the other things. So then you can also wash that in the in the washer. So that's helpful. And then, ooh, the baby shusher. So the baby shusher is a uh, sound machine on Amazon and it literally just shh for, I think you can program it for 15 minutes or 30 minutes and it goes continuous, but you do want the baby shusher. It works wonders. I know a lot of people um, say white noise. So yes, we did get a sound machine that does white noise and it does like rain, um, ocean, heartbeat. And so we have that and it's portable and we can clip it onto the stroller. You can clip it onto your diaper bag. You can clip it on wherever, but the shusher, you can do the same thing. Or what I did, because I didn't know about the shusher until a couple weeks ago, 
you can download the app. It's like $5. And so you can turn it on and turn it off or you can have it on program for 15, 30 minutes. It does the same thing. It's $5. But the only thing is it's good to have on hand. And, the, and that's why I got the app because we already had the sound machine. But the Shusher, I can put it on my, I mean, it's on your phone. So if the baby's in the car fussy, you turn it on and within a couple minutes, she's out sleeping. And so um, I don't want to put the phone next to her. So I try not to use it, but it, like, if we're out and about and I don't have the portable sound machine on us, or if we forgot it at home or from the other side of the house and I don't want to get it, and I can just turn on my phone. It's amazing. You need to at least get the shusher. That is a must. If you don't get the sound machine, get the app. So that's a must get that um bath stuff you want a bathtub the we had the lily pad but i feel like the bathtub is better because you can do newborn infant toddler like it transitions all those phases and you just have like the one bath piece and honestly i feel like she's more secure in there than the lily pad that you put in the sink so we prefer the bathtub bath toys yeah she doesn't really care right now but like when they're older you're gonna want to get like some stuff to make it more pleasurable in the bathtub like for them like to have fun um bath mat i did see like a mat i don't really i don't know why you can't just use a towel we we roll up a towel and put it under us our knees like when we're giving her a bath um so your knees don't hurt they have some for sale i think it's like 35 dollars. it looks like a foam pad like a fancy foam pad um, but lately I've been getting in the tub with her and Marlon's been outside the tub just because we're still kind of learning. So we put the towel outside just in case and then I'm in the tub. But, you know, to lean over and like, you know, you want some kind of cushion there because that sounds like it hurts. Um, the whale, we have like a whale thing where you put water and then you pour it on the baby to like rinse her off. Does it have to be a whale? No, because before Marlon knew I had the whale. He was using a red cup. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Do you have to get the whale? No. Is it cute? Yeah, it's cute, but you don't have to have it. So if you guys are just looking for the stuff that you must get, that's one that you can leave off. You can just use like a plastic cup. You just need something to fill with water and pour over the baby. Um, shampoo and body wash. Make sure it's fragrant free. The one that they gave us in the hospital was the Johnson Johnson. And yes, it makes your baby smell amazing. It makes you want to sniff your baby all day. But when we went to the pediatrician, I noticed that when we used the body, the, the wash, her skin was like super dry. And then we put the lotion on and her skin was like getting flaky. It was almost like cradle cap. But the doctor, when we told her what we use, because we used what the hospital gave us, she said, absolutely not. She said, you can use whatever brand you want as long as it's fragrant free because it irritates their skin. So we got the Aveeno body wash and shampoo, but I think Pipette is another one. She said V and Cetaphil, they have brands for babies that are fragrant free. So you wanna make sure you get those. And washcloths and towels they have baby towels i don't know the difference between the baby towel and the regular towel i guess it's less harsh on their skin it's less rough but um you'll probably get gifted those anyways honestly i have tons of towels tons of washcloths tons of clothes uh oh we'll get to the clothes you want to make sure you get a brush like a little baby comb and then we got a nail grinder I didn't want to clip her nails because I'm scared I'm going to draw blood. So we got a nail grinder. It's super easy to use. It has different tips for a newborn and for different ages. And there's even one for an adult. But it's just more gentle and more easier on your sanity. I've already used it because she was getting a little um, scratches on her face. So I found a couple of the nails and I grinded them so down. Now to the high price items. Let me make two disclaimers. One, do you need a nursery? No. As you can see, we got very excited and changed one of our guest rooms to a nursery. She's not even gonna be in here for at least four to six months. So do you have to have a nursery? No, we literally come in here to rock her in the rocker and her clothes are in the dresser in the closet. 
and that's it. Um, two, high price items, if you can get second hand, do it because some of these items you're only going to use for three, four months and then you're not going to use them anymore. A lot of people get on Facebook Marketplace or some other secondhand place and they put them for sale for so much cheaper. So let's go through them. One, the crib. I got mine from Target. Um, you can get cribs from Facebook Marketplace. Two, the dresser. You don't have to have it. You can just put clothes in the closet. We had an abundance of clothes. I couldn't fit so we have a dresser i wanted a dresser eventually this is going to be her room um or if we have another kid then we'll split it into a split room but there's a dresser you know for when she's older the next one is a bassinet you do need a bassinet you need somewhere to put the baby um get it secondhand you're only going to use it for a few months it's going to preferably be a roll-up one that you can put next to your bedside preferably one that has storage on the bottom so you can put the diapers and the wipes um, and the butt paste there and maybe like a burp cloth there and like under so that would be a good purchase a swing you're gonna want I would say get a swing um, Aria does not like the swing right now she is fussy but apparently they I mean they do like to be rocked and so instead of going like this all the time <laughs> or sitting in the rocking chair, which is another purchase, um, you can get a swing. We got ours for $30 gently used on Facebook Marketplace. It works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but you're not going to use a swing forever. So people just have it at home that just had a baby. They want to get rid of it. It's big. It takes up space. So most of those items are on the secondhand used websites stroller and car seat we got the duna best investment ever so the duna is an infant car seat that turns into a stroller so it's all in one um it is pricey but you're gonna pay the same if not more for an infant car seat and then a well you're gonna have to buy a stroller and you're gonna have to buy a a, another car seat after the infant car seat so you can either do a duna which has the infant car seat and a stroller in one if you are planning on having more than one child i would recommend that because the main thing that got me was the convenience factor sometimes i'm gonna be by myself i don't have i mean it's so much easier to take the car seat and whip it into a stroller rather than take the car seat, pick it up, take it out, get the stroller, put it in the stroller. It just doesn't make sense to me. And plus it's only for the first like maybe year of life, if that, um, maybe longer. So it holds 35 pounds or 32 inches, whichever comes first. And then you'll have to get another car seat. So this is the one that goes rear facing in your car. So, um, you can get that used too as long as it's not been an accident we bought it brand new we're gonna have more kids we're planning on having more kids so we just opted to get that as a convenience factor after she outgrows that one we're gonna have to get a stroller and another car seat that's fine with us it's a year down the road you know she's it's gonna take her a while to outgrow it and then we have um something for the next child to use you know it's one of those investment pieces where if you're gonna have more than one child then you might as well just spend the money and get it because you're going to use it. Um, the Duna, when you buy the Duna, it does come with a base. If you want an extra base for another car, um, then you can just buy the base separate. They are on Amazon, so you can put it on there. And the great thing about the Amazon registry, and I'm sure other registries do this too, um, but you can allocate like if it's a high priced item and you want to get it off Amazon, you can say, oh, I want people to contribute to this one. So not one person has it to buy the whole, the one high price item. You can contribute however much money towards an item until it's fully purchased. Also, a lot of these registries, they offer completion discounts. So like Pottery Barn, we waited for the um, completion discount, which was 20% off to buy this rocker. We couldn't find a rocker that we liked. This one was price the priciest one but we loved it so much because it's so comfortable 
and we just said this is the one item that we're gonna buy that we're spending money on um, everything else we got a great deal we were gifted or it was on the registry so it worked out but um, Amazon gives you a 15% completion discount so after your your baby shower and you have the registry and people have purchased off of it everything that's left over after a certain time Amazon will say, hey, we'll give you 15% off if you want to purchase the rest of these items. So that's also a nice. So whatever else that you want to buy, just add it on there and then you can buy it for 15% off later. The next thing is a bouncer. We have this bouncer here. Um, we try to put her in there. She likes it. She doesn't stay in it very long, but also she can't bounce in it. She's too little. So we have it for later. Um, but sometimes we put her in there and she's, you know, looking around, whatever. So it's a nice item to have. But again, if you can get it secondhand, do it. The next one is, oh, the crib mattress. Get a breathable one. So we invested in that one too. I forgot the brand of it. It starts with an N. I'll put it up on here and I'll link all these items below. But um, it's a breathable mattress. So that just gave me a lot of peace because, you know, we have a, um, a wall mounted like a camera and you can also get one that's desk mounted, but we didn't have anywhere to put the desk one. So we got a, a wall mounted one, but just in case for safety, just get the breathable one. It's just easier. It gives you peace of mind and, you know, they last forever. You can wash the cover on it. So it's great. Okay, that is all the nursery items. Um, okay, some random. So we have, by the changing pad, it's a little basket and we put diapers and wipes and whatever in there in order to change her. Um, some people like the rolly cart. Um, I didn't want to get a rolly cart. I didn't want like an extra piece of furniture. So... Some people get the cart, they put all of their stuff on there and they put it next to the dresser or the changing pad or wherever you, you're gonna change the baby. That's nice because it's like a little um, area where you have everything that you need to change the baby or whatever you do, whatever you need. You can just lay it there. Um, another one is a laundry basket. We do have a laundry basket right here. It's just like a little wicker basket that I put her stuff in because I wanna make sure it's separated right now because we're using a different detergent for her and a different detergent for us until like i said we run out and then we can use her detergent or like a fragrant free one but i do have a laundry basket and plus it's easy if she has a blowout i just dump it in there and then we can you know wash it um if you're using in the closet you want to get baby hangers and the diaper genie the diaper genie I'll tell you my experience because it's been back and forth all over the videos that I've watched on YouTube saying that it doesn't work, it smells, just use a trash can. Could you use a trash can? Yeah, you could. But now that I have the Diaper Genie, you they come with um, special bags. So that's the annoying part. You have to get the special bags to put in the Diaper Genie, but I think it's worth it because it doesn't smell. Some people say it smells but then I found out it smells if you don't buy the diaper bags that are from Diaper Genie. Like if you get an off knockoff brand, it's not the same. The ones that we have are the Diaper Genie. So what you do is you just put the diapers in the pail and when it, it it's, um, you tie a knot at the end. So when it's full, you just take the bag out. There's a little um, blade inside and you can rip the, tear the end of the bag tie it in the knot and put it in the trash. So when you when you push on the trash can, it, like you push your foot on it and it opens up the little pail, you put the diaper in it and then the pail closes. And then, you know, that's it. So that's the idea of it. There's no smell. This room does not smell bad. It does not smell like poop. It, trust me, her diapers smell. So I like it. I think it's great. If you want to use a trash can, you can. Do you have to get a diaper genie? No, you don't. But it was gifted to us and it works for us, so we just use it. Um, the next thing, clothes. People are going to buy you clothes. If you want to put clothes on your registry, do it. But this is what I will say. This is something that we were gifted. It's Kite Baby. It's very soft. It's very stretchy. 
but the reason that I love these is because it has a zipper here and it has a zipper here. So when you wanna put the baby in, you zip it from here and put the baby in. When you wanna change the diaper, uh -huh, you zip it from the foot up and then you change the diaper and then you zip it back down. Oh my gosh. We had her in these sleepers for, I mean, probably, I mean, this whole time. She's four weeks old. I recently started putting her in like the onesies and the pants because I have to use them. I have so many of them and I have to use them. I didn't want to keep using the sleepers over and over. But when you're tired and it's the middle of the night and you have to change the diaper, the last thing you want to do is button every single button. You're half asleep and sometimes now they have those um, sleepers that they have buttons just like here. So you can unbutton, change the diaper and then button it back. It sounds good. But try doing that in the middle of the night when you're delirious and you're running off like no sleep. Try buttoning it all back. It's gonna come out like crooked, like you're gonna button the wrong ones. But also, I mean, these are just, these are amazing. Now the kite ones are a little pricey or they're worth it. Honestly, if I wasn't gifted this, I would totally go and buy like one or two more for my friends that are having babies just because they're so amazing. There are dupes on Amazon that I can link for you. Um, that's like half the cost of it, but this is just like a bamboo stretchy material and it's just so well made and I'm frugal, but if it's well made and it's worth it, I will totally buy it. So this is one of the things I will buy. If you're gifting something to your friends, get a double zippy. They do have magnetic ones. We have them. I haven't used them because she can't fit in them yet, but I don't know. I will use them, but to have magnets on her body, I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm going to use it because, you know, it magnetizes and then you can stick it back. So that's that. Um, you will probably get gifted a lot of clothes. If you are gifting someone something, I would say sleeper, uh, wipes and di diapers and wipes, sleeper, and then whatever's on the registry that I said that you you should have like that's just based off my opinion based off my experience I would say that but uh, most of the stuff that's on that checklist of make sure you buy this make sure you you add this on your registry you don't need it you don't need it it's just a bunch of stuff um of course blankets are nice you know swat the swaddle blankets get those you can get them custom made with their name on it with the little beanie or like the little um headband if it's a girl so those are all the things that oh my gosh there's so, so many things right okay so the next thing um there is a book i'll put it right here happiest baby on the block i was told to buy this book by a friend's uh grandma so, wow okay this book is so good and he also has one called the happiest toddler on the block which i will be purchasing but he pretty much has the five s's of um, how to calm a baby down. Okay, so I'm going to give you a rundown of the five S's. So pretty much he says, colic is not gas. He's a pediatrician. He's been a pediatrician for 30 years. He said colic, ba colicky babies is not from gas. And he explains why in the book. But he says that the reason why they're fussy the first four months is because they've been taken out of a, an environment that they were comfortable. So you pretty much have to recreate that environment and he does it with the five S's. So the five S's is swaddle, swing, shush, side, and suck. So swaddle, you always want to swaddle the baby. It makes them feel nice and tight, cozy and warm like they were in your womb. The shush is why I said the shushing machine because for some reason that sound works. They You put the sound the shush sound um, louder than the baby's cry. When the baby calms down, you lower the volume and you leave it on for a little bit until the, I mean, the baby's going to go to sleep, but you leave it on for a little bit after golden. The suck is one, make sure the baby's fed Two, make sure the baby doesn't have a wet diaper. And then you go through the five S's. The suck is one to make sure the baby's fed, but two, the pacifier. He says in the book, do not introduce the pacifier if you're breastfeeding until you're comfortable with the nursing. Um, 
because it just gets a little complicated. So once you're comfortable with the nursing and the baby's latching on and you're nursing well, you can introduce the pacifier. I did find out that whenever she nurses, um, the lactation consultant in the hospital told me, listen for her swallowing. So you can hear her swallowing. I started to not hear her swallowing and she was just on, on me like using me as a pacifier and she wasn't swallowing so once i read the book and i realized that when she does that i can kind of notice it now but i'll lay her down i'll swaddle her i'll put the shush on and i'll put a pacifier in and she takes it and when she doesn't take it and she spits it out it's usually because she's hungry that's it the next one is swing so you want to rock her um or you know in a rocking chair back and forth or side to side that's why the swing is important um or you can walk around the house but do you really want to be in the habit of walking around the house swinging and rocking the baby like it's nice at first but it's kind of tiring especially in the middle of the night and you haven't had sleep and she's up every hour every two hours every three hours right now she's giving us about two three hours maybe um sometimes it's like one and a half but I don't want to be waking up rocking, rocking, rocking. So um, to have a swing is nice. Right now we do rock her in the rocking chair. But the swing is nice to have just for that purpose. And then two, what I found, I mean, five, what I found interesting. What did I say two? What I found interesting is they tell you put the baby, lay the baby on her, his or her back. Because you don't want them to suffocate if you lay them on their stomach. When they're in their womb, he says that they feel like they're falling when you put them on their back. So yes, you want them on their back because it's safe. But if you have them swaddled, I would lay them on their side. Because when they're on, in your womb, they're not this way. They're on their side. And she tends to be super calm. So what we do is we swaddle her. We put the shush on, we put the passy in. If she doesn't take the passy, we rock her when she's sleeping or when she spits her passy out because she'll do that. She'll use the passy and then she'll spit it out, but she'll be asleep. We'll lay her in the bassinet on her side. She's out like a light. It's amazing. It works. So you don't have to hear a screaming baby. Um, I mean, she doesn't scream unless she's like hungry and I don't get to her fast enough, but just to hear her scream, oh, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And so I can't imagine her screaming for an hour, two hours, three hours because it does happen. But try those things. I hope this video helped you. I hope it's informational and I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you guys have any tips for me or anything that you would add or not add to the registry, comment below. I'm curious to see what you'd say. Like I said, I'm only four weeks in. I still have so much to go, so much to learn. <laughs> so much to learn. And I would love to hear from you guys.